Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Painting in Place. I'm Scott, and as promised, we are going to go ahead and start the spoopy season off a little early today uh, with actually something I'm really excited for. Uh, rather than just doing a single miniature and going, haha, here we go, we've done a mini, uh, we're going to build things up, and we're actually going to build a little bit of a setting. So uh, from now until the end of October, every single miniature that we do is going to be part of uh, something that we'll be able to put in together and have a completed scene or possibly even a completed encounter for some players uh, at the end of the month. So I, this is the first time we've done this, so I'm, I'm really excited to see how this goes. Let me see here. Uh, let me go ahead and see who all is in the chat. Crom the Crusher, hello, hello, how are you? Uh, Brioni, great to see you. Uh, greetings and salutations to you as well. Leork, hello, how are you? Manic Pixie Travel, it's your favorite day. Welcome back, so great to see you. Lachlan, great to see you, our, our uh, very talented uh, moderator there. And uh, Oddfawn, hello, good to see you as well. How are you? Hope, hope that you've been doing well. Uh, so yeah, I don't think I really have any um, announcements of any sorts to get into it, so I'm gonna go ahead and start off, I've got some spoopy music to play. Mm, there we go. And... Let's go ahead and grab our mini. So to this day, we are going to be working on a banshee. Um, the creature that will wail at you and have you cower in fear with her once beautiful and elegant voice. Um, historically, or at least as far as Dungeons and Dragons is concerned, uh, a banshee is, was an elven woman of great beauty who has since been lost and in her vanity uh, could not cross to the other plane of existence and is here to haunt the, th this world. Um, so we've got some things here that you may note this is very different from most other minis that I've painted, first and foremost, in that it's it's green and kind of translucent. So what in the world are we going to do with that? Well, the goal with this, at least when it's normally painted, is to, uh, I think, to keep some of that translucence. So uh, a way to make it look as though the light is passing through. Um... But it does make it really hard to see some of these details. Uh, I've got a couple tricks that I might do to try and fix that. But the other thing about this mini is that um, it, it's got some great sculpting on there. You've got the, the woman who is, is crying out that you honestly can't see at all. Oh yeah, Lachlan, we do have a, an episode on the Banshee. Look, good job. Good job, man. Uh, there's some great detail on here that you honestly can't see. So what I want to do is I want to paint her clothing in a very ghostly, ethereal color and leave her body being somewhat translucent, but using a wash to still let us see the details of it. Um, I might do the hair. Uh, I might just wash the hair in a different color. I'm not quite sure. And then the ground is going to be the ground as normal. Uh, so now let's go ahead and just dive into it. I believe, um, if any of you have been around here for a while, um, you may recall a video that I did way back in the day on a um, Miniature Monday, back when that was still a thing, on Grave Wraiths, and in particular using the color um, Hex Wraiths Flame. And that turned out really cool. Um, but in, in that video, I also use this color that we're going to use today. This is a technical paint by Citadel that, wow, you can't see at all. Hold on, let me, let me fix this. Is that better? Oh, that's so much better. So this is Night Haunt Gloom, which is like the, um, uh, the creepy blue version of it. It's a really cool color. Um, I did a video on how to use this style of technicals, um, but honestly, I'm still learning how to do it myself. So what we need to do here is, this is actually kind of tough. I might start, hmm. 
I might actually start with a wash. Um, just so I can see these colors popping up, because right now I really can't see them. So let's do that. Let's... Ugh, that's going to make painting this... Um, we're going to have to wait a bit for this to dry. <gasps> nope, nope. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to start with the paint. We'll, uh, we'll be able to work from there. So I'm going to start things off with Citadel's Wraithbone. Um, this is a really cool color that I got for... Uh, specifically for undead things. Um, it's got a... It's got a, an eerie color to it that I really really enjoy. So we're going to go ahead and get some of this on our wet palette here. And before I water any of that down, I am going to go ahead and just put some of this on her clothing. Also, uh, something I should point out is we're getting pretty darn close to that follower giveaway that we're going to be doing here, where we, uh, we give a miniature away to one of our followers. Uh, not just any miniature, but you design a, a Hero Forge mini, I will print it, and I will paint it. I feel like I talk about that every... Oh, wow. Hold on. I might need to... No, this is still good. I feel like I talk about that every single time, but it's, it's exciting. This is the first time we've done one of those. We're five... Er, wait, hold on. Six. We're six followers away from that. So, hey. Anyway. I'm definitely going to need some more Wraithbone um, to do any more work on this. But we're off to a good start here. Crom the Crud... Wait, what movie? Huh, I feel like I saw that man at Casey Travel. Um, Darby Ogil and the Little People. I haven't even heard of that one. My gosh, what movie is that? What's it about? Manic Pixie Travel story time. I, I... What in the world is that film? Ooh, that's already really watered down. So let's grab some more of this. Ooh, that's going to be a good chunk. Here we go. And of course, to base this mini, we've got it on a bit of um, sticky tack. And these days, I'm... It's normally referred to as corking your mini. Um, oh, good lord, Crom the Crusher. Did you just, like, go to IMDb and copy-paste that? <laughs> Odd Fun, currently finishing up playing Fall Guys, but this uh, calm stream is definitely helping the stress levels. Oh, good. I, <laughs> um, I've been watching some people play Fall Guys. It looks like so much fun. How... Um, Listen, Oddfawn, I will not expect uh, an answer, so feel free to, like, get back to me whenever you can. Like, how goes Fall Guys? How, how are you doing? Got, got any crowns yet? I think that's a thing, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so hold on. Doesn't want to tell his daughter that he's in a position uh, taken by a dashing younger man, Sean Connery. Oh, this must be a much older film, then, if Sean Connery is playing the dashing younger man. <laughs> uh, on his way home... Slips through a portal to the land of the little people. Meets the Leprechaun King. Oh, gosh. What? What? All right. All right. 1959. Okay, yeah. You're, you're getting crowns, but at what cost? Clearly, the cost of your sanity uh, is, is my understanding. Yeah? But hey, those crowns, man. You, you get them. You, you bring home the gold, all right? You grab grab those other little plushy jelly beans, you throw them into the slime, and you, you get that. <laughs> I should really play some Fall Guys. It looks like so much fun. The other game that I've been seeing a lot of that I would love to play is um, uh, Among Us. That one looks like so much fun. Oh, there's a Banshee that is the Harbinger... Uh, death in it. That's cool. <laughs> it's fun, but the rage is real. Yeah, I can get that. I can get that. 
Ooh, so since we're getting into the spoopy season, let's talk about this. What movies absolutely horrified you as a child? Um, like, what were the moments that you were just like, I, I can't, I cannot do this? <clears throat> it is really hard to tell okay that's part of her clothing I might just end up painting her entirely and we don't have any of this see through effect and I'll just I'll paint her to look ethereal because unlike other minis where if I get um, if I get paint on it, I'll just paint back over it. If I get paint on the bit that's supposed to be translucent, translucent, I need to get that paint off, otherwise I've ruined it. Now I can still paint it to look cool, so the mini won't be ruined, just that effect that I was going for would be. All right, down here at the base, I don't need to be as worried because we're going to... We're going to paint the base to look different. Oh, who framed Roger Rabbit when Christopher Lloyd goes all evil and bug-eyed? Absolutely that. Um, that would... That's a messed up moment. Also, just a great film in general. Um, so good. The child... St I actually... I just watched Chitty Chitty Bang Bang again. Uh, like a month ago, and oh, the child catcher is so creepy. Um, also, as an adult, I watched that and went, oh, all, all of this is just a story. Wait, what? I, I never got that as a kid. Like, oh, this is all really happening. Which I suppose is great because, you know, for the children in the movie, to them it's really happening because it's one of the greatest stories that their father was telling them. And also, lovely memories from that movie. Um, Hushabye Mountain is still to this day my favorite lullaby ever. Um, Like, I, I learned that lullaby because I love it so much. Like I, I don't know if I'm if I'm going to have kids or anything, but I learned the lullaby anyway. <laughs> Couldn't sit through Alien and Aliens as a child. Oh, you could sit through Alien and Aliens as a child, but that scene from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I, oh my gosh, yeah. That was one my mom actually would not let us watch, uh, was Alien, well, just the Alien franchise, because that was one that she saw as a kid, and still to this day, she's upset by it. Um, and, like, I, I love my mother dearly. She's not one of the people like, you'll never watch this film! Uh, she's like, nope, I'm, we're not gonna, we're not gonna own that movie. Uh, you can watch it on, on your own, but I, nope, uh-uh. <laughs> Uh, see, I'm already getting... What I should have done, and this will be what be what this ends up being. I'm going to go ahead and just paint the whole thing this color. A little upset, but this will be, be the base coat, and it'll be fine. Because this way, I'm actually going to be able to see the details that I wasn't able to see before. Um... Because in some places on this model, it was like I was painting by Braille, which is tough. Oh, Lachlan, the other you were watching was... Oh, no, Nightbot, I was reading that. Hold on. Oh, the animated Hobbit. Oh, wow. With uh, with 102 degree fever? Yeah, I, I could see how that would just be a, a crazy trip. Oh, see, there's that face. There's that face that's going to be terrifying. Uh, 
some. What were some for me? What, what were some movies that I was like, no, gosh. I mean, obviously, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Um, the, the scene with... I mean, the scene with the, the heart being ripped out of the guy and then being burned. I mean, jeez. Um, although, that, that movie... Ooh. <laughs> Not not necessarily giving the uh, the goddess Kali uh, their their right dues. <laughs> History professor Dave, good afternoon to you as well. How are you on this fine Monday afternoon? Hope that everything is going well for you. We are getting this banshee going. We're Learn never to watch anything new with a fever. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, if I ever have a fever, I, um... I'll just typically watch something I've already seen. Um... Can't really play anything. Well, let's be honest. And, and also, reading is... is rough. Let's be honest, you just want to lay there you, and have something on in the background and just let yourself bake whatever is in you out. Teaching four different tr classes and switching my brain between four different... Boy, that is rough. Um, how many topics do you teach? I mean, obviously four, but like, what, what are they? Um, that's crazy. Like, what, what's... Uh, you're, you're a history professor. Uh, uh, we, we've had this. I, I asked before, like, history professor Dave, what do you teach? Scott. <laughs> like, what, what topics are you doing? World Civ. All right, cool, early and modern. I like that. U.S. and U.S. history, early and modern. All right. Ooh, modern U.S. history. How's <laughs> Gotta be going good. I don't remember very well, but I think some episode of The X-Files crept me for... Oh, absolutely. Okay, well, actually, let's talk TV uh, shows for a while. How about, um, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Does anyone remember that one? Uh, that series. Who, uh... That and, like, the original Goosebumps? I feel like this is just kind of turning into, uh, that episode of South Park with the member berries. Yeah, I, I remember. Seriously, though, nostalgia is not all bad. Oh, hi, Fumpy Space Princess. How are you? That was my... Uh, my bad impersonation of... Um, uh, What's-his-face from the room. Oh, hi, Mark. No, so, so how's your sex life? God, that guy's... I only saw The Room for the first time this year. Oh yeah, Are You Afraid of the Dark was much scarier. Uh, yeah, this is the, the Reaper Bones Banshee. Um, I had something else I wanted to start off with, because uh, as I, I mentioned at the very beginning, the idea is for the spoopy season this year, as opposed to last year, I was like, ah, oh, we're gonna do classic horror monsters. This year, I like the idea of every episode, we're gonna do a new piece for like a full encounter at the very end. So at the end of the end, end of the season, we'll have like a whole diorama that we can look at and go, ah, that's cool. Um, 
I thought about starting off on something else, but I don't know, just as I was packing, because we're packing here at the tavern right now, um, I was getting ready to pack up some of my mini minis and I saw this one and I went, oh, yes, we need to include the Banshee. So yeah, that's, that's that. So I'm gonna close that. I don't need that to dry out while I'm painting. Why did the grown-ups want to stare, scare our generation so much? I, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. But my gosh, they, they really did. They did, a, they did a good number of us. The Banshee, the encounter is spooky enough. Really interested to see the final lineup. Absolutely. Well, I will say um, I'm having to 3D print one of the pieces. Um... And, yeah, we're, we're going to get a nice combination of terrain and creatures. So, should be cool. Should be fun. Also, for anyone interested, the uh, soundtrack that we are listening to today is Barovian Castle by Tabletop Audio. Uh, I'm just going to say right now, this is this is not sponsored. Uh, I'm just a huge fan of Tabletop Audio. They are a, uh, uh, I believe, it's uh, just one guy who was playing D&D with his son. He's a sound engineer, and he thought, hey... You know what this game needs? Music. And so he um, designs a bunch of audio tracks for tabletop games. That all have, they all have a very specific um, use to them. So it, it has music, but it also has sound cues. So like on this one, you'll hear um, thunder and lightning crackling every so often. Um, but it's very much got that like I mean I, I know for a fact that this song was was done with um, uh, Curse of Strahd in mind so anyway he's got hundreds of audio files that you can go through it's all free uh, if you're ever in need of music for your tabletop games I highly recommend it. Uh, we use some of his stuff in the Gauntlet. Um, although, we are switching to uh, a new source of music. Um, so, keep your ears peeled um, and see if you can find... We're going to be using new... Like, transitioning over to new songs here um, in the next couple of months. So... You know, bonus points to anyone who can pick out the new stuff. And you can redeem those points for just respect, I guess. <laughs> I'll respect you. Alright, cool. That's looking pretty good. We're going to let that dry for a little bit. Uh, and as that dries, let's go ahead and grab... What do we want? Ooh. Actually, some of those places there are not working out. There it is. Okay. Nope. Come back. So, yeah. How's that? She's already looking... See, you can already see so much more of that detail in her.
Now, I wanted to paint her dress this ethereal blue using Nighthaunt Gloom. And then for the body, I'm thinking we might actually go back to Hexwraith's Flame uh, to give her that, like, green glow. Although... Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. That's that's what we'll do. All right. I know this is kind of a silly thing to ask, as we are in a very strange time this spoopy season. Um, how many of you are still, uh, are still planning on dressing up? And if so, what are you going to dress up as? History Professor Jave, <laughs> dressing up as an overworked professor. You think you already have your costume. Nice. Very good. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, that'll, that'll be great. Are you going to have a, a name tag as well? Why? I just pictured you with a name tag that says, "Hello, my name is my name is Dave." <laughs> ah, bubbles, you are the bane of my existence. sad um, we've lived in this place we're going four years now we never got trick-or-treaters ever um, cuz no one would ever come down we live we live at the end of a, a dead-end street no one would ever come down the street so, last year, we, uh, used some of our, our lights and our awesome sound equipment, um, and it sounds so creepy when I say it this way, but we lured children to us, um, but we did, we, we showed like, hey, there's something happening down here. Um, and Emmy and I both dressed up and just were outside being super creepy, but then also just had candy for the kids to, to take. We had a, a bowl, very much like, here you go, take one. And it's the first time in my life I've ever given out candy. And I loved it. Um, yeah, seriously. <laughs> um... But now that the, the studio is moving, we're not going to get to do that again. We had just figured out how to do it. And it's not going to happen.
I mean, it also wasn't going to happen this year for very obvious reasons. Oh, and uh, History Professor Dave, to answer your question, I am using uh, Wraithbone. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, just, uh, that, that's exactly how we lure, lured them out. We, uh, we had Emmy, uh, sing, and it put everyone under a spell, and that's how that worked. <laughs> okay, I think... No, what we did is, um... Uh, Emmy has a, um, a great collection of dark and creepy looking, uh, formal wear, wear. So, she wore this, uh, long black dress that she had, and had a, like, a corset as well, um, and then had a mask that had then a veil that came over the front of it, um... And just in all black and then I have a uh, long black cloak uh, and I got myself a large black um, beaked Raven's mask so not a uh, not a plague doctor's mask but an actual like Raven with thin feathers coming off of the side um, and Again, all black, and then I have a very, um, uh, I, I have a gentleman's cane with a steel silver handle to it, and again, a black shaft, and those were our costumes. And we presented ourselves as Mr. Crow and Miss Moon, and we were backlit, so when the kids would come up, they'd basically just see these living shadows, but every so often, depending on how the light would hit us, they'd see the form of our body. Um, and I actually think we had this song playing in, behind us. Uh, we took the sound system outside, and um, we had two cauldrons, one that they, uh, one that had the candy in it, and then the other that had a ultrasonic um, mist maker in it, so it just took water and turns it into a cold flowing fog and that was that was it uh, we definitely had a... children were very afraid of us and there, there was one group of kids who came up they were like younger teens, very very tough looking and as soon as they came up to us they, they kind of slowed their roll a little bit um they got candy from us, they said very little, and then, um, as soon as they got the candy, they turned and very briskly walked away. <laughs> oh, we loved it. It's called Winning Halloween. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dave. We were... We were very proud of it, because we're big fans of Halloween here. Um, it's just... We've never had a chance to... do much with it. I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and as that's drying, I'm gonna paint the base. Oh, uh, what color should we do for the base of this? I'm I'm trying very much to not do dark stone. <laughs> Even though that's what I want to do. Hmm. 
You know what? I'm going to start actually with um, London Grey. I think that's a nice place to start, and we'll we'll go from there. We'll see how that looks. So this is Vallejo's London Grey. And yes, Spoonkins, her costume last year was fairly spooky. It, uh, it very much was. Come on, wet palette. I need to be adding more water to my wet palette. It keeps curling up. So if uh, if any of you out there are using the technique of making a wet palette that I showed on um, Miniature Monday, um, if you ever find that the edges are drying and curling up, just add more water to the palette and that will take care of that. Now comes the fun bit of figuring out which parts are cloth and which parts are the base. Oh, I think that's cloth that I just painted over. But that's looking pretty good. That's looking good as it is. once again as it's painted you can really see the detail it's it's so hard to see the detail on these sometimes oh no frumpy space princess <laughs> did you just get enough for uh, for a wheel of chaos <laughs> no oh yeah well we know what's happening on uh, on friday then Ooh. <laughs> okay, can I just say, Friday is Chaos Wheels. Good lord! Um, Lachlan let us know in the post-show hangout afterwards, we had 13. 13 in that one episode. My god. I... I really gotta find more stuff for you guys to spend points on. I really do. Um. So much chaos. It really was. Chaos did indeed reign on that day. And hey, they finally beat the, uh, the first level of the Labyrinth, which is so cool. Very much looking forward to seeing what goes on next. Um, also, actually, on that note, I'll let you all know that uh, I did indeed make that channel in our Discord, so if anyone wants to kind of add their own traps or puzzles or anything for any of the upcoming labyrinths, you have a place that you can go to post that. Um, I 100% I want to see other people add, um, like, new... I, I'd love to see what you guys come up with for things. Okay, so... I'm pulling out the X-Acto knife because I've got uh, I've got some flash in here that I see needs cleaning, in particular on this hand. Now I probably should have done this before um, painting, but once again, couldn't tell 
what was what until there was a base coat on here. So that's my excuse, and I'm sticking with it. Good. Uh, Layork, the Labyrinth was a great idea for us to spend points. I like to spend, uh, I spent like two or three Chaos Wheels in it. Yes! I am I am really happy with how the Labyrinth uh, turned out. Because I think the Gauntlet by itself is is a really fun show. And, you know, you all seem to be enjoying it, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, but I did feel as though, like, man, we should have... there. It needs something. It needs something a little more, like, not just combat, but, like, dungeon crawly to it and thus, the Labyrinth. Man, I just realized there's probably some people who, um... The Labyrinth is all they know. They... haven't seen... actual gauntlet combat yet. Ooh, my ends are starting to split, and I don't like that! I don't like that at all! Come on, brush! I take good care of you! I take great care of you. Why, why you gotta, why you gotta do me like this? There we go. See, you, you didn't mean it. There we go. No excuses. Just ex explain. Yep. <laughs> cool. Okay. I think it's time now listen I need to follow my own rules and I need to do her flesh first well her flesh first let's yeah let's do hex wraith flame why not y'all ready for this it's been so long since I've used this. My gosh. Oh, it's such a pretty... Like, look look at that color. Look, look at that. It's so cool. Here we go. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. She still looks super ethereal. Hey, Dragon Mage, how's it going? How you doing, RJ? Whoop. Whoop. Alright, that's good. Alright, 
let's get that face. And honestly, I'm kind of, I'm thinking the hair as well. There's a very unfortunate mold line on the side of her face, but oh, you know, it is what it is. I know this is a great view right now. Hey, working on voices for Wednesday's show. Ah, yes, I'm. Uh, oh, you're and you're also painting a new mini. What uh, what mini are you painting, RJ? It's looking pretty cool. An NPC human barbarian. Ooh, I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. Is that one that uh, came in your, uh, the, like, random box collection thing that you signed up for? We'll look back up at the chat here in a second, I promise. <laughs> there we go. Oh, missed a bit of her foot. There 
it is. So there is her body. I think that came out really nice. Yeah, the fade, it, it's, it's looking pretty darn good. Um, but now we get another really cool color to put on top of this. So now we're gonna switch over to, actually, uh, I do need to do some touch-ups on the Wraithbone in a couple of places. Um, I need to touch up where I accidentally got the Hex Wraith Flame on bits that didn't need to be the Hex Wraith Flame. And then I also need to touch up the ground where it's actually not the ground, it's her um, clothing. So yeah. <laughs> um, he's got a huge bear pelt on him. Oh, perfect for Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. That's awesome. Rhyme of the Frostmaiden, man. That book just came out. That is looking so cool. Um, I'm very that pleased to say I picked up the uh, alternate art copy. Um, and looking forward to reading more of it. Also, uh, the blind boxes for that for Rhyme of the Frost Maiden also came out. Um, and we picked up a set of those here at the tavern, so you can expect a uh, an unboxing of those will be coming out here soon. Oh, I see what I did. I see what I did. Okay, nope. Actually, I didn't need to touch that part up. Okay. But I did need this. Just gotta do some really quick touch-ups. It's fine. Don't usually get the campaign books, but I like winter settings. Oh yeah, winter settings are so much fun. Um, you know, especially if you, uh... I feel like environmental effects are things that players don't really have to deal with all that often. So if you can put something in where suddenly your players have to deal with the consequences of being in a very frigid environment, um, and you know, maybe if they're out too long, uh, they're, they're gonna have some problems. I just think it's a lot of fun. Oh no, oh no, no no, did not mean to get that on her leg. All right, let's see if I can't just clean that off really quick. And there we go, no harm, no foul. Yeah, I, um... Typically, I would only get campaign books if I knew they had, um... important information for me. So, for example, I, I have a copy of Eberron because I knew that I wanted, um... The Artificer, I knew that I, I wanted a lot of the, the items in there, so beyond the setting, it also had a lot of important information for me. I got Salt Marsh because it had all of the rules for oceans and uh, sailing and oceanic combat, which uh, my game at the time had a lot of. Um, I'm starting to pick up the books as they come out now um, more because, you know, all of the... the campaigns that I've ever done have been homebrew. And a lot of it has been, you know, my, my own chicken scratch notes as to um, important information and plot and all that. And I figured, you know, I should probably um, learn how to write um, my stories in such a way that if, if, really, if I had to, I could hand it off to somebody and be like, here you go, here is this. So, 
I'm using them more as a, a reference file, or a reference now for how to write um, campaigns. Mm, no, I'm not happy with that. Um, man, that little bit right there. All right, let, let, me, let me try this. Let me see what this will look like if I do this. No, I'm not happy with that. So I'm gonna have to wait for that to dry and paint back over it. Blech. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. So actually, as we wait for that to dry, uh, let's come back to the gem that we worked on last time. This green turned out really cool, really happy with it. The, uh, the wash did very well. Uh, so I think it's time for us to go ahead and just do some really quick, uh, really quick highlights. So. We were using emerald green. Let me go ahead, bring out, yeah, I like Kraken skin for the, um, or actually, yeah, Kraken skin for the outermost edge. And let's, um, honestly, that'll work. Super quick and easy um, highlighting on this. We're just gonna do some dry brushing starting with our original color was um, going through my old files today, and man, let, me, let me get this other light fixed so you can... Leoric, you bought only one campaign book for D&D 5e, and it was The Curse of Strahd. Now, I mean, that is just... I, I understand that it is one of the best... Uh, modules um it's certainly a uh, a favorite for that people run uh, i actually don't own that one yet although i did see that they are coming out with um what was it return to strahd or something like that um they're they're doing essentially a um, like a edited version of it, like Strahd 2.0, <laughs> which I thought that's kind of cool that they take something and grow uh, from it. that and then let's give it one last quick pass of just this highest color and this one we're just gonna hit on the edges we uh or at least we're gonna try 
You know what, actually? Do this with a better brush. with how that is going. The dry brushing wasn't working great. Now, that being said, I was using a super cheap brush to do that. Um, like, this is this is one of those 10-cent brushes, so it's not like it's... All right, hold on. I actually need to grab a different brush if I'm going to keep doing this. Because that one's garbage. Here we go. These are not going to be much better, but let's let's see if we can't get something going out of them. Wow, these are like really bad brushes. Nope. Wow. You know, we're gonna hold off on that. We're gonna let this one dry. Yeah, okay, so actually, so here's how you can tell that it's a bad brush. Uh, when it does that, um, and this is not through neglect, I've been cleaning this thing very nicely. Um, it's just a really, uh, really cheap brush. So just uh, like with everything, you know, and you wanna invest in good quality stuff. Hey, Shady Scott, how's it going? Good to see you. Let me see here. <laughs> Maybe they wanted to release Strahd without the racism towards Roma people. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's um, a good, good call. That's I'm pretty sure that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, okay, so that bit's dried. We need to go ahead and then repaint the cloth on there because I'm I'm positive that this is meant to be cloth. There's not a very clear defining line uh, between her clothing and the rock. Now I can understand why they might have done that uh, for the whole hey, she's a ghost. She's coming out of the ground. Like, yeah, that's great. But kind of makes my job a little harder. I'm not very good at um, blending. That is a skill that I'm I need to work more on. So, until then. Also, Carrie, um, Shady Scott, just waking up because of your shoot that went until 3 a.m. this morning. Wow. That's... Jeez. Uh, well, good morning. Uh, I hope that you've had some coffee and are ready to face the day. No, I just don't like this. I don't like... what that's doing. I'm going to call that your cloak. I'm going to say that that's where your clothing ends. So once again, if it's not on the sculpt, we have the ability 
to make a decision for ourselves. And I am making that decision right there. Cool. A little bit of cleanup on the gray. Not much, just a just a smidge. Just a smidge. And there it is. Cool. Yeah, music videos for you, huh? Woosh ya. Woke up, did a couple minor drinks to transpo. Oh, hey, cool. Final export is happening as he's... Whoa, I cannot wait to see how transpo turned out. Okay, now that that's done, I think we can go ahead and do Night Haunt Gloom on um, the rest of this banshee's clothing so let's get to that i'm excited to see how this is going to look I, I really am here we go Okay, one second while I, uh... Oh, man. Dragon Mage, um, any advice on painting black fur? Uh, yes, don't paint it black. <laughs> um, or if you do a black base coat, um, you are going to be, you know, working your way up and up and up into the lighter shades of gray. The things that are going to sell it as um, as black is not the black, but it's going to be all of the grays that you layer in. Um, uh -oh. um, 
So I would suggest rather than um, uh, rather than painting it as you know starting it as a black, I would suggest um, painting it like a super super dark gray. Um, that way your washes can actually have something to do. Uh, and then from there, layering up into, um, fur is another one of those things that I, I personally enjoy dry brushing. Um, so just dry brushing, then a, a lighter gray, and then a lighter gray, and then a lighter gray. Also, Shady Scott, didn't you, um, didn't you paint, like, a, uh, blackish direwolf? Um, yeah, Shady Scott might actually be able to help you out with some pointers in there. Maybe, I don't remember, it's been so long. I don't... I don't remember what we used to do, guys. You know what? I'm actually gonna... We're gonna do this. There we go. Yeah, I like that better. Stop it. Stop trying to call me, whoever you are. I'm doing something. Uh, you did a black pat, cat and panther. Um... <laughs> I know, it has been so long. I, I could tell you that you painted the, uh, the dire wolf any color, and you'd believe me, maybe. As long as I say it with enough conviction, right? seeing places that I painted one color that I should have painted another, but it's okay. We can always go back. Uh, 
Uh, so if any of you are wondering what makes this these paints that, that I'm using right now, um, you know, Hex Wraith's Flame and Night Haunt Gloom different um, from normal paints, and you know, why are they called technical? Um, now, technical paints, at least if, if you're painting with um, uh, Citadel paints, you know, they, they've got their paints labeled as, as a base, as a layer, as a highlight. Um, they, they try and take all of the guesswork out of what it is that you're trying to do. And technical is one of those that kind of encompasses a few things. Uh, so it's it's effects and it's um, uh, in this case these paints um, you want the base layer to kind of fade through so you're seeing that original base coat that we did I'm not trying to hide it all together I want it to peek through um, so that's the big thing about these I think I'm probably being a little heavy-handed with the um, Night Haunt gloom, gloom here. Um, but it's okay, it's still coming out cool. Again, that's my understanding of it. Uh, I might be wrong on it. Lachlan, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it's, it's, she's coming out pretty cool. You can also see with something like this, it's actually really simple i mean we've been going at this one for an hour and 20 minutes um and to be honest we're getting pretty far along with her Did you miss it? Did the impression happen already? Uh, no, you didn't miss it. I'm not gonna lie, Shady Scott. I was kind of waiting until you got here. Um, I know better than to do the requested impersonations uh, before you get here. So, yes. <laughs> um... All right, so last week you all, uh, you actually requested two. You requested, um, uh, well, you requested two, and only one of them was happening this week, because I, I need a week to do, I need a week to learn, guys. That's, I'm learning a new, it's, it's a new skill. It's 100% what's going on. Uh, so this week we were doing Goofy, uh, a Goofy impersonation. I'm not gonna lie, I had a lot of fun with this one. Um... Not necessarily in the learning of it, but in the learning of the history of Goofy. And I, let me see, I've got the name. I want to make sure I've got the name correct here. Um, but yes, so, um, it was told specifically the uh, voice of Goofy from the Goofy movie. And a gentleman by the name of Bill Farmer has been voicing Goofy since, um, I believe it's 1987. Um, so he's, I think there's really been like three major voices. Whoop, I'm drifting out of, wait, what? Which part? This this part? Main camera? <laughs> Main camera or which, which camera? Um, we'll, we'll get there, I'm sorry. I think that's going to do it for 
the night haunt. Um, so now I need to go back in with the hex wraith flame and do a little bit of cleanup. Uh, so anyway, Bill Farmer is the um, the voice of Goofy right now, and anyway, so let me, whoa, let me show you uh, what I was able to do. <laughs> now, not necessarily what I was able to do in a week, um, but I'll I'll get more on that anyway. Uh, all right, well. Uh, Goofy's voice is somewhere in here. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, I, I found this. That someone was... Oh, wait, now I'm, I'm out of it. Ooh. Uh, I, I found someone doing something online, and I had a lot of fun doing this, so let's try and, uh, get back into this. Gosh, <laughs> well, I, I don't know who you are, but I've got a particular set of skills. <laughs> so I will find you, <laughs> and I will kill you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there we go. There's Goofy for you, doing the phone call from, uh, Wanted, or no, not Wanted, um, uh, Taken. <laughs> so, um, as I said, I, I, even though it was, it's been a week since y'all requested me to learn how to do Goofy, that's not a week worth of practice. I had a day set aside to practice Goofy, because things are kind of busy here right now. And the day that I had set aside, I woke up with a sore throat. Now, I was, A, panicking, because sore throat, oh no, oh god, no, please don't be, please don't be the big C, don't, well, no, not the big C, but like the second big C now. Uh, so I'm freaking out, worrying, uh, and also just couldn't really talk much. Uh, much less learn a voice that, in per particular, he's got a lot going on in the back of the throat. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my day that I that I had set aside to practice Goofy uh, was spent with me just drinking tea and not talking. So, that is literally... Me learning Goofy this morning. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I certainly... Is it a great impersonation? God, no. Um, but, you know, if, if I... Um, if somebody said, hey, do a Goofy impersonation, I'm like, <laughs> gosh, then, yeah, someone's gonna... Like, hey, yeah, that, that, that's Goofy. Anyway. Next up. Um, at least next week. We're going to have JD from Scrubs is your request. So. Y'all best be prepared for me about to monologue about some, uh, silly stuff. <laughs> okay, there we go. So that's coming along rather nicely. Um... Now, I don't mind, uh, let's see here. Dave, you're, you're familiar with these technical paints. Um, I have been seeing back and forths as to whether or not you wash these. Um, I've washed them before, and it seemed to turn out all right. It definitely lost a little bit of the effect. Um, but it didn't seem like the end of the world. What, um... What, what's your stance on, on washing these technicals? I'd, I'd love to love to hear what you think. Uh, okay, so... Because if I am going to wash them, there are some bits that... If I'm not going to wash them, there are some bits that I think I want to clean up. If I am going to wash them, I think uh, it'll be hidden 
with that. I don't like this uh, this gray for the ground. I don't like the gray for the ground. It's got to be a little more earthy than this. So let's... Yeah, I think a, a spot wash might be a pretty good call. Watch, I say that, I'm going to end up washing the whole thing. <laughs> I do want to wash her face. I think that um, um, getting uh, some, some darkened eyes would be really cool. It just... This color looks so much better for ground. It's... <sighs> That's true. These technicals really are just essentially contrast paints, aren't they? Which I've never actually used. I've seen all the, the, the videos on them and whatnot, but I've never used contrast paints myself. Because again, I'm not a huge Citadel person. Um... I'm, I'm, I prefer my paints in dropper bottles instead of in, um, the pots. And I know you can, you can take Reaper and, er, and, no, you can take Citadel and transfer them to pots. And I probably will eventually. Uh, I'm just not at that stage in my, uh, my painting life just yet. You transfer all of your citadels to dropper bottles. Dropper bottles are just hands down better. They're better as like a, oh, cool. Black Templar and, ooh, Gilliman Flesh. I have actually, I've heard of Black Templar. Um, not familiar with Gilliam Flesh. Sounds cool. I will say the names that they use are pretty freaking sweet. for bronze and gold. Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, uh, wow, that is a... That's a heck of an undertaking you got there, Dave, but, uh... Best of luck to you on that one. Hope it goes well, and... Keep us updated. <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna let that dry uh, around the base. It just, it looks like such a better color for the base of a mini, doesn't it? I... Darkstone, you are hands down my favorite paint. I will never betray you. All right, while that dries, is this dry not yet? Yes, this is dry. All right, let's go ahead and do this again. This one, meh, didn't turn out great. It's not bad, it's not great. Um, but there's that one. 
And that's done. That's that's that. That's it for uh Yeah, but that um yeah, beep 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 that that that's all folks. Uh no, that that's uh that's it for this crystal set, which has turned out really cool. Now this is not going to be part of the big set that we're working on right now. This was just something fun that we could do while we waited for other things to, to dry. Now we're still waiting for this thing to dry. So Scott, what in the world are we ever going to do? My gosh, no! Uh, it's okay. I came prepared, guys. <laughs> We've already done one gravestone. Uh, we're working on a, um, a banshee. Clearly we're going to need some more gravestones. So I pulled this guy out. Kidson, painting in place. Yes, indeed. Uh, today we are we're working on this banshee that's coming along really nicely. But right now we gotta wait for some things to dry. So we're uh, as that's happening, uh, we're gonna make another gravestone. I think this will be the second one, and I've got a lot of these to do. Okay, so we've already got that uh, London gray out. So bam. Now this gravestone has some really interesting, uh, like elaborate um, design to it. So the last one that we did was kind of basic and we did super quick. It was one color. Uh, and then we dry brushed. Honestly, I think we spent maybe five minutes on it. But this one, I think that um, we could get a little more fancy with it. And because these are things that I've just got pre-prepped, ready to go, uh, I, we don't need to take all this time to figure out what we're going to do with it. I already had this color pulled out, so there we go. Sometimes one of the biggest um, roadblocks that you can have is just that creative freeze of having so many options or not knowing what you want to do. If you just dive in and do it without worrying about, well, that makes the process a lot easier. Uh, Leoric. Banshee is looking gorgeous for a murdering and screaming undead. I mean, she that's how she's going to get you. she It's like that um It's almost like the the character from or that ghost in the very beginning of the first Ghostbusters, the the librarian. He was just down there and very quiet, very plain looking, and then she turned into that uh, that creepy thing, um, kind of like that, except without, a, except not a librarian, but a gorgeous elven woman who's just wandering a graveyard, um, and you enter into the graveyard and you see the just living embodiment of beauty, and you go to approach her. She looks up at you. And she opens her mouth as if to say something, and instead of words, a haunting wail begins to erupt and becomes louder and louder, and as it does, her beauty begins to grow into this translucent figure in front of you, until she rises up into the sky and approaches you, floating off of the ground. I need everyone to roll initiative. <laughs> Somebody come get her. She's screaming like a banshee. <laughs> Also, on that note, I am way behind on this, um, but yesterday I finally, finally started um, uh, The Witcher. <laughs> oh yeah, that was pretty much the, the premise of the Banshee and the Oni. That's right. Ah, that was fun. That was a fun one-shot, RJ. And that was also the birth of one of my favorite uh, characters now of... Um, Killian Greyforge, my artificer. I, I love him so much. I've used him now in uh, two other one-shots, and mm, 
If I could play him in a campaign, I'd love to. Yes, I'm okay, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm on episode two. I started it last night. Um, so I, I had something on while I was packing. Um, and yeah, nope, love it. I love it. I'm confused, but I still love it. And I, I like Killian enough, enough um, the, the joys of being a DM, you know, the, the always the DM, never the player. I like Killian enough that I might just, uh, I'll, I'll just make him an NPC, like a, an important in, NPC in one of my games. All right, and now that we're waiting for that to dry, we can go back to our Banshee. So, okay. Um... I do want to wash it, because I think that'll clean a little bit up. Um, I've got a Thonian camo shade, but I think that's going to make the greens a little too sickly and not very um, uh, not very bright. And I've got, here we go, Army Painter's Green Tone. I think this is going to do it. So let's, let's see what this does. I might be about to have regrets. I might, I might about to... Regrets might be about to be had. There we go. That'll work. <laughs> I knew I wanted this on the face. Oh, that's that's creepy. That's really creepy. If I just let it pool up in the eyes a little bit and the mouth. In fact, I'm going to do that. Um Yeah, that wash is helping to clean up some of these areas, so we're going to keep using it. light with the wash. I don't need it to do a lot of work, just a little bit. Right, huh? <laughs> there we go, that helped to get some of that out. Alright, let's go ahead and drop this in her eye, eyes, and mouth. And we're going to clean that up a wee bit. There we go. that so there you can see kind of what that's done to her face I really like what that's doing I'm gonna pull a little bit out of that eye there we go uh, maybe add a little bit more in it's yeah there it 
is. There it is. Okay, so now the trick is I need this to I need this to rest just like that. And how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna take some of that sticky cork or sticky tack. And there she goes. She is off, resting so that her eyes will dry in that very particular face. Also, Manic Pixie Travel, I love seeing Austin's uh, Austin's emotes in here. Looks fantastic. Love it. <laughs> All right. So while that's drying, uh, and I just did the face and the hair, we're going to go ahead and then we'll do some washing on her uh, arms and legs. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get this gravestone painted up. Now, there are some rocks in front of this gravestone that we are going to paint a different color because they're there. We're not trying to hide details, but at the same point, we don't have to be super detailed with this uh, with this miniature. Uh, so we're just going to grab a different color for the stones. Um, let's say, yeah, black gray. I just grabbed, I grabbed one. We're not going to need much. Just a, just a wee bit. Now, in addition to that, um, we actually are going to need... Ooh, that actually dried out really quick. Coolio. Yeah, so it didn't do much, but it did accentuate that face. Um, which is good. Which is great. So, let's go ahead and get the rest of her now. Again, being super light with the uh, the wash. Nope, that was, that was too much. I say, I say being super light, and then I just go to town. It's fine. What I'm trying to do with the wash is hide um, some of those transition areas where the white is coming through not because uh, I want it to look translucent, but it's coming through because um, I was just, I was sloppy. But we can use this to hide that. I maybe did lose a little too much in the face. I might go back over that with... I don't know what. Yeah, the face looks a little splotchy. Mm -mm. to do
let's hit it with hex rate. No, that's just gonna darken it. And I need whoop. I need to lighten it. Do I highlight with wraith bone? Or no. I suppose I could hit it with wraith bone and then go back in with the hex rate flame on the spots that were just too bright. Give it some highlighting in that fashion. Or I could just leave it as it is. It doesn't look that bad. It's not going to win me any awards, but it's going to look good on a table. Hmm. Let's see here. Yeah, I think it's fine as it is. All right, so that's going to bring us to the base. Let's go ahead and hit the base with Agrax Earthshade. Agrax Earthshade. There we go. started Ratchet last night. Yeah, I saw that that was a, a thing. Um, so you recommend? It's looking pretty good? Oh yeah, well, Sarah Paulson, yeah. Okay, but it's also looking pretty heavy, so let's pull some of that out. I am typically very heavy-handed with my washes, so this is me trying to be better. There we go. That looks, that looks much better. I'm going to take a little bit, though, and put it up here. I think I missed that. No, that's just... Eh, it is what it is. Cool. And even there, I think I can take up a little more. What can I say? I'm a big fan of just contrasting colors. Whenever I do an Instagram post, I crank that contrast up way high. It's a little gory sometimes, possible trigger topics, but it's good. All right, I'll have to... I mean, I'd say I'd have to look... I'm gonna... I'll watch it, but... Right now, I got a lot of things going on, so it, it might take me. I'm, I just got to The Witcher. That's how long it takes me to get to stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah. Okay. We're gonna let the wash on her base dry. As we do that, let's go ahead and come on back over to our creepy. Uh, creepy. It's just a. It's just a tombstone. That's not creepy inherently. Come on. Alrighty. So we're going to hit those rocks that are on, and we chose this black-gray for those. There we go. Oh yeah, just that much is more than enough to bring out the, the different rocks on the ground. Uh, nothing on the back side, so they're all on the front. I've got a little bit on the ground, but that's okay. We'll just cover that up. And this one's fairly big. Now, could these be mounds of dirt? Yeah, they could. You can paint them to be that. You can paint them to be whatever you want. <laughs> Alright. That 
that's looking pretty darn good there. So let's do this um, uh, this kind of fancy stonework going on here. Uh, so I imagine that this would have been... How do we want to do this? Carved in. Probably just a lighter gray. So I'm thinking... Ooh, no, not field blue, but blue-gray pale could... Yeah, blue-gray blue pale. That'll be good. Da -da -da -da. There we go. And I just want to get this these sides that are like... Oh, that was a little heavy-handed, but okay. That's literally all we're doing. Just that much to show that this is um, a little bit of extra work went into this tombstone. So maybe this is uh, someone who had the money um, to, to buy a fancier tombstone. Uh, or maybe it was someone who was important. I know, just varying up small details like that uh, are suddenly going to bring a whole different story to your world just in the scenery itself. Alright, so once that dries, we'll hit the whole thing with some... Uh, what did we use last time? I think, yeah, Agrax Earthshade. So that's just going to be nice and super easy to do. Uh, Boy, howdy. All right, so this is dry. Let's go ahead and highlight the ground, and we're gonna do that with Scotty's favorite method. We're just gonna be uh, dry brushing. So, starting up. This is not the best brush for dry brushing. Yeah, this one will be better. All right. <laughs> so this is how much I love Darkstone. Um, I, I got myself a backup, because I know that I'm going to need it. I know I'm going to need it sooner rather than later. This will be the first, uh, first dropper that I've gone all the way through of a single color. Because I use it in absolutely everything. That is a very good question, Frumpy Space Princess. Do you use your points on chaos or on healing? I mean, chaos is fun and all, but that healing uh, can really come through to save the day. You saw how ecstatic the party was um, with Brioni um, or... Um, Fire Garnet Snake, who once again, I, I feel as though Fire Garnet Snake has been, <laughs> she's really the, the cleric of the team, let's, let's be honest. It's true. The, the Labyrinth really took it out of them. There was a lot. <laughs> oh, boy. You know what? 
I, I shouldn't just say labyrinth crafting. I should say gauntlet crafting. Um, because we, we did the numbers in the post-show hangout after last episode, and, um, the party is pretty, um, they've seen most of the stuff that, uh, that the, the Chaos Wheel has to offer. Oh gosh, that... Oh my gosh, this dropper bottle is just mostly medium. It's true, it's not all Havoc. Um, although I don't think it's perfectly one-third of each. Um, I think neutral is the lowest. Um, and then there is the one, you know, then, then there's the spin spin. Um, uh, but as I was saying, the party has pretty much seen everything except for two of the, uh, the bars on the Wheel of Chaos. Which means that it's probably time for it to uh, become something new here soon. We'll probably start seeing some new um, some new Chaos Wheel stuff appear. This is not working. I, I was trying to work with some other colors. Hold on, I gotta go grab my browns. Because again, I thought that I had grabbed everything. I have not. I grabbed mostly everything. Except for these two containers, which have even more paints in them. <laughs> Ta-da. Uh, let's see here. Also, all of my paints had uh, had a very unfortunate accident when I accidentally knocked over my paint holder. Luckily, they were all properly capped and uh, nothing nothing got anywhere. But it sure as heck meant that whatever organization I had. doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> it's true, you get the experience of figuring out exactly what is on the Wheel of Chaos, which, uh, you know, that's typically a good thing. Yeah, so, um, actually, wait, let, let me see if it was properly answered. Yeah, exactly. Um, Oh, no, you're hearing a kind of vibration from the mic? It's not the music, is it? Hold on. Is it that? Hello, hello, one, two, three. And then this, hello, hello, one, two, three. How, how am I sounding to people? Hope oh, it's okay. There we go. Yeah, the mic is also pretty close to the table. Let me pull this away. Okay. I am inc incredibly excited because um, with the move, yeah, I do need to figure out a better way of doing the music. I know last time I tried to just have the music come through OBS, uh, it was way too loud. Um... Alright, there we go. Uh, but luckily, as I was saying, uh, with this move to the new space, um, the soundproofing that we're going to have available to us 
is going to be much better. So I'll be able to play with my levels here, get a clearer quality audio coming through. Um, so yeah. Oh no, Layark, it's all good. Yeah, I, I've been listening to the playbacks. I'm I'm not happy with how the music is coming through. Uh, but at, at the moment, it is what, what it is. Um, and there we go. There is her base highlighted as well. So I think that might be it for the banshee. I'm going to I'm going to set her aside for a little bit. I'm going to going to let my brain just chill for a little bit. Yeah, the I I'm I'm enjoying the music. Um I'd I'd like for it to be clearer to you guys so that you can really hear what's going on as opposed to this thing that only really comes through when it's nice and loud. Um So, uh, with any luck, we'll get this sorted out in October. Hey, Emmy, hello! Oh my gosh, hi, how are you? Do you like, all like how high my voice I see someone new, I'm just like, oh my god, hi! <laughs> uh, right, I react to Earthshade. And we're just gonna go to town on this. Bloop, 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 bloop. Oh, don't worry, I mean, we're not. Oh no, did that? No, that's okay. We're not wrapping up just yet. I've still got, uh, I've still got this um, gravestone to paint. We're we're doing the the wash. We'll get some highlights in there. We'll be around. You'll be here. We we got you covered, Emmy. I was telling everyone at the beginning of the stream, well, not the beginning of the beginning, uh, what we did for Halloween last year with um, Miss Moon and Mr. Crow. You know, good, uh, good memories. We'll just let that dry. Oh, well, even if you're only here for a few minutes, Emmy, it's always so great to see you. We will. We will. I, I realized as I was talking about it that the new tavern... I don't know if we're gonna really have a place that we can do it. We'll we'll have to figure it out. We'll have to figure it out. Because I really want to keep doing it. All right. Well, there's that gravestone. Who's the face is still looking a little splotchy. I'm hoping that I can maybe fix that by putting a little more wash on the side there. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, that was good. And if I do some here. Yeah. Spoopy season has officially started at Painting in Place. It, it has indeed. Here's our Banshee, which actually here. Um, I should be able to pop this over and get a much better look. Um, there we 
there she is. Yeah, I think she's done. I'm pretty happy with that. So that is our first, uh, exactly, exactly, History Professor Dave. As soon as the pumpkin spice starts, then that's it. Halloween Town has cracked open. Jack Skellington is here. Um, so, and now I, I will also admit, though, I, I do like me some pumpkin spice stuffs. It's, uh, it's good. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, all right. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to uh, let this uh, banshee, we're going to let her dry. Uh, we're going to keep working on, well, this also, we got to just wait for this to dry. And I don't really have anything else prepped. I kind of have something prepped. Where did I put the base for it? Uh, oh, right here. Uh, do I want to start on this? Have we got time? Ah, uh, yeah, we've got time. What am I talking about? All right, let's, let's. Let's do something else. <laughs> She's a basic banshee, and she needs Uggs, a long cardigan. Hey, long cardigans, man. Those those are awesome. Uh, so here's the other thing that we've got to work on that's kind of in the same vein as the banshee. Go ahead and get this corked, even though I'm not using corks. Uh, this is a bunch of... It's a like a spirit summons. So we've got this ghostly just... Uh, well, it looks like ghostly flame raising up out of the ground. Uh, and intermingled in there are some skeletons. Um, I don't know if this is going to be part of our encounter, but I put this aside, thinking that the Banshee might be pretty quick. So let's at least get this thing corked, based. We might not finish this one today, and this might not even be part of our... Uh, well, no, I'm, if, if we're working on it here at... Um, painting in place it, uh, during the spoopy season it's it's gonna be a part of our final little diorama so um I guess, I guess here we go i guess this is just me committing to this ghostly summons as a part of it <laughs> mm -hmm. What, what have we what have we got going on here? We got some skelly boys. We got some ground that they're on. And we've got... Uh, I think that's all the cleanup that I had to do. Let's base it and find out. I think I'm going to base it in the same... Um, wraith bone. Especially because the skeletons themselves are just going to be bone. So why not? Let's go to town. Start at the top down. Zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> I don't know what sound that was. <laughs> I guess that's the sound that I make when I paint now. Zoom, 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 zoom. Your new desk arrived. Oh my goodness, RJ. Uh, that's awesome. Two months? <laughs> yep, go to town. But don't go to town. Um, but go to town. But like think of going to town remember town remember what town was go there in your mind go to town in your mind <laughs> oh this is gonna this is gonna take a lot of this paint If I thought the Banshee was easy, well, this is just going to be easier. Um, so, uh, RJ, did it, like, just get here? 
Ah, oh, Emmy, I'm sad that that's all the time that we get with you today. I hope that the rest of work goes well. Um, you know, stay safe. And, uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see you later. Ooh, this wraith bone is chonky. Hey, odd fawn. I have indeed. Uh, yeah, we've got the uh, we got this one done. We're starting on this one, and we've got a got a tombstone. We're getting a lot done today. Um, how's the uh, the rage took over? So no more fall guys. Oh no. How? Uh, which one? All right, so of all of the game modes, which one gets you the most, Odd Fawn? Like, which is the one that every time it pops up, she's like, nope, this this is it. This is where I lose it. It's been a fun run, but no more. Placed an order at the end of July and kept getting delayed. Now, wow, yeah, um, we've had something similar. We've, uh, you know, we ordered our 3D printer, uh, and that was supposed to have been here, you know, like two weeks ago. It's fine. Um, slime climb or a hexagon? You die every time. Oh man, I. Slime Climb, I have seen some, um, I've seen a lot of runs of Slime Climb. Like, the people who've got that one down, like, with the, the shortcuts that you can take, it's amazing. But that being said, I look at it and I go, <laughs> nope. Um, and Hexagon, yeah, that is... I really should just get the freaking game. It sounds so much fun. Oh man, I am out of frame entirely. Jeez, jeezly peats. I mean, what, you guys actually wanna see what I'm painting? Psh! <laughs> Why would you want something silly like that? Come on. Ooh, my arms are actually starting to get a little tired.
I usually play with a group of friends, so uh, most of the time it's just a good Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah. Th I... The only time I really play online games anymore is if I can either A, be anonymous, or B, if I'm playing with friends. Um, and yeah, just having a good laugh. That's, that's the way to go about it. <laughs> oh, chilling with blankets with two puppies. That's... My gosh, Odd Fawn, were, were you trying to make me jealous? Because... Doing a pretty good job. <laughs> yeah, I, I could really go for some uh, some puppy time right now. But unfortunately. No puppies here at the tavern. And, uh... Very few plans in the future for any puppies at the tavern. It's not that we don't like puppies. It's just we're not allowed. I'm not allowed to have them. What uh, what kind of puppies have you got? What, what kind of puppos are we we talking here? Oh my gosh! So many bubbles. I'm. Just watering it down too much? <laughs> Lachlan, I, I love that you had to add that. That was, that was great. Um, toy poodle. Co oh no! Oh no! Odd fawn, you're gonna you're gonna be pulling on all of the heartstrings here, aren't you? Yeah, our uh, our auto mod AI isn't uh, isn't that good just yet. We still have to teach it some things. Whew, this one is turning out to be rather time consuming. And let's be honest, it's going to take a couple of coats to get this one done. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that's that, that's exactly it. Our our automod was like, "Hey, that's a naughty word." And he's like, "No, automod, it's a that's a word describing something really cute." So deal with it. I will also say, as perfect as this song was for uh, the Banshee, I might for next week put together just a playlist because um, every time this song like restarts up I'm like and there's the start of the song Question. I've got a lot of models to get through. Am I better spray priming them all at once and then going about it that way, or am I better doing small lots as I go through? Uh, personally, I would say, ooh, actually, it depends. So if you've got a lot of models um, that you're going to be going through, um, and you're good to... Oh, is it bad to leave them primed and wait for a while? No, I don't think so. You can, you can prime them out and then... Um, you know, leave them primed and come back to them. Um, one thing that you'll want to do, oh, actually, really quick, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a quick break and stretch my hands out a little bit. Uh, one thing that you would want to do, if you are going to spray prime them and then come back, is make sure that the models are covered. So I actually, uh, like when we did the brain in the jar, I, I had to wait a little bit uh, in between painting that. And so I used one of these, which is just a small glass that I use for my clean water. I think they're actually made to be candle holders. Uh, and I put that over the model so that it doesn't collect dust uh, when I'm not painting it. Because I have run into issues where I haven't painted a model for like a couple of weeks. And then I return to it and there's some levels of dust or layers of dust on it that I have to take off. Now that's also not the end of the world. So you could prime them, leave them on a shelf, and come back in a month. And as long as one of the first things that you did was take a, um, a dry brush and just brush the dust off and get that, the main thing that's on there is the primer coat, then you're still good to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, if we're talking days, even weeks, uh, before getting to them, uh, heck, I, even a month, you'd be fine spray priming them all in one go. Um, if you are worried that it might be longer than that and you just you don't want to worry about dealing with the, the dust buildup or anything like that, um, you could just spray prime them in batches. Go, hey, here's the set that I'm going to be doing uh, you know, it, for the foreseeable future. Spray all of those. But honestly, I'd say do them all. Get it, get it over and done with. Um, it, it should be fine. How many models uh, are you uh, are you thinking that you're gonna have to do? Oh yeah, you had like the massive box of them, didn't you? Oof. Man, hand is really cramping up. I think the the camera is actually a little farther away than I'm used to, um, so I'm having to extend my hand out a bit farther, and that's really starting to get to me. Uh, okay. Back we come. We're just gonna get a base layer done on that. Wow, that was a big bubble. We're gonna get one base coat done on this guy. That's, that's all we're gonna do. Whoa! Uh, it's a game set with a few expansions. Oh, cool. I forget. You've told me what this game is. Um, and I'm forgetting. I love that there are so many games now with um, models. Yeah, that's right. You put the ones up on, on Discord, and so many of us were jealous. Like, those are really cool models. Um... I 
I forget, are you paint you're painting those for a friend or like your friends are like, hey, you paint now. Here. Is that is that how that happened? See, I'm, I'm so... Massive darkness is on the side. Oh, cool. I didn't realize they crossed over. I'll tell you, this is somewhere where I would not mind having my airbrush and just be able to base coat this thing and be done with it. Now another great way you can get rid of bubbles uh, rather than just blowing on it like that is if you've got a hair dryer, um, like setting a hair dryer on low and just hitting it with that is a great way to both get rid of those bubbles and also to um, uh, to speed along the drying process. I know some folks who have like a, a small beater hair dryer um, by their crafting station just for that purpose. He just turned up with bags. <laughs> wow. I hope you're getting to at least, like, keep a couple of those minis. Or maybe, like, you know... Are, are you getting something out of uh, out of that deal? <laughs> I hope so. Man, even just that's looking really cool and creepy. And you can finally see, like, the skeletons that are in there. 
<laughs> you don't know right now. You're just happy to paint them. He did turn up with a good bit of alcohol for me as a part of payment, according to him. So you're... All right, well, there, there's at least that. Yeah, my friends uh, and I, we have kind of a... <laughs> we, we do everything on a barter system. It's like, yeah, I'll... Um, uh, I'll print that many for you, because I know that in the future I'm going to need you to do something for me with one of your many skills. And... Um, so that, that's kind of how that goes. <laughs> um, have yet to do any painting uh, for any of my friends, because for the most part, you know, I, I went the um, uh, teach a man to fish route of it. Rather than paint minis uh, for them, I taught them how to paint minis themselves. Uh, and then they, uh, well, then now if they ever want any, uh, to paint, if they ever want any minis painted, they, they do it. <laughs> Honestly, I think they'd rather just prefer to paint it themselves rather than be like, all right, I'm going to, I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna paint your mini for you. Like, no, I wanna. I wanna. Fine. <laughs> hey, Afrain Gaming. Hello, welcome. Good, good to see you. How are you today? Welcome to one of our other shows, uh, Painting in Place, where we are working on a. Well, it's kind of hard to tell what this is at this angle, but it's like a wall of. I, sh I should really pull the focus a little bit farther down. Hold on. No, I need the focus this way. Come on. That's yeah, good enough. Uh, a wall of creepy, spooky, spiritual powers. Um, we started with our lovely Banshee here, who is done. Uh, and yeah, it's we're entering in the spooky season early, and we're working on some creepy stuff for tabletops. Doing good, doing good. We are, um... You know, it, we're, it's gonna be a busy week for us here. We're, uh... We're actually moving. Uh, which is exciting, and also just... You know, moving during these times is just... Tough. Because your friends, uh, who would normally help you, not really able to not really able to pull in the whole all right everyone we got pickup trucks we got pizza we're gonna do it the uh these days it's more of a hey all sorry i can't help but i hope the move goes well which also um to all my friends watching like i'm not i'm not gonna be like oh god my friends no i I, I don't want your help. Don't don't you freaking do it. Uh, stay home. Stay safe. Um. But so yeah, so that's that's going on. And aside from that, we're just uh, we're just living life. You know, we're we're having a good life. At least as good of a life as we can. All right. I know you want to help. I know you do. Um, yeah, I think a couple of my friends who absolutely, yeah, that COVID test is not fun. Did you have the, the here, let me dig around in your brain test? Because uh, I know here, there's the test that they're given these days is uh, it's like cough into your arm. Uh, a few times, and then we're gonna swab this around in your mouth, and then you're good to go. Um, but 
yeah, I'm... I'm not getting the COVID test because I know I can't quarantine. Um, so I know that it's really not doing me much good. Um, because... Um, those of you who've been with us here at the tavern for a while already know this, but for those of you who are new here, uh, Miss Watkins here at the ta who lives at the tavern with uh, with me, um, it, when she's not doing adventures pack stuff, is an essential worker. So she is around people, which means that even if I wanted to, uh, I couldn't quarantine. So yeah, that's that's fun. <laughs> um, you've only ever had the brain probe. Oh gosh, uh, yeah. Our neighbors were telling us about uh, the. Um, apparently, you can get a test over at Dodger Field, where it's just here. Let's swab your mouth. It's the first time I'd heard of it, which is also making me go. I I don't know. I don't I don't know if I trust that test. Okay, I think that's enough for a base coat on this creepy thing. You work for the NHS here, so we get tonsils and deep in the... Whoa! Okay, well. That's a... It's a heck of a test. Do you have to get that often, or is it just a... Uh, was it a one-time dealio? Or is it a, hey, every two weeks dealio, which... Ugh. There's a blood test one, but you think that's for antibodies? Yeah, that would make sense. All right, so we're coming back to our gravestone here. We're gonna go ahead and we are going to do some highlighting to this. Um, forgetting what colors we used. It's okay, we're just gonna go ahead and pull up the ash gray, because for this, we're gonna... Um, we're gonna do just a, one pass of highlights on this. We don't need to do much layering on it. Because again, it's, um, um, it's background. It's, it's scenery. We want it to look cool, but we don't want it to look cooler than the other stuff. <laughs> Alright, here we go. That's a little too much. There we go. And just like that, one weathered tombstone. Three times! Good god. Um. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, I, I'd feel as though you, by the end of it you're just going, I, I have no brain left, you took it all. And there's that. That is another tombstone. So that is two of our tombstones down, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six more to go. Uh, so we'll probably end up having to do more than one per episode. But yeah. So let's see here. Let's do a really quick recap. We've got uh, a base layer down on our spooky spiritual wall. Uh, that's going to look really freaking cool. Um... And then we've got our second tombstone that is going to uh, really start to flesh out our uh, collection of them. And we have our lovely Banshee, who I think is going to be one of the main parts of this encounter that we are working on building. 
So there we go. That was that's a lot of work that we got done. Oh yeah, and we also highlighted the uh, the crystal that we started last time around. My gosh, and we've got I think two more of these left. So I guess I'll have to prime a couple more, and we'll just we'll just have some more stuff that we can paint in the interim while we wait. Um, although we've got all the tombstones, we got to get these tombstones done because it's the spoopy season. We got to get the creepy stuff done. Uh, but that is what we are working on, and that is what we are going to continue to work on until the end of the spoopy season. Uh, and hopefully, yeah, by the end of it, we'll have a really cool-looking diorama. I think it'll be, uh, I think it'll be fun. Well, I know it's a, a little early, but I think that's going to do it for today's painting in place. Uh, thank you all so much for joining. I'll go ahead and I'll get these uh, sealed up, and I'll get those pictures posted up onto our Instagrams here shortly. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed this, please, if, and you're in the audience, please consider giving us a follow, uh, sub and yeah, follow, follow our channel. We have a lot of shows here that we're doing, and we're, we're trying to make new shows all the time. We're just having a whole lot of fun. Uh, also, before I go, a quick reminder that this Wednesday is our special, uh, dialect game. So it is, uh, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, we've got a lot of, of hype going on about this. We've actually... Yeah, uh, on, on some of our social media, media, some cool stuff has been happening. Um, but yeah, so that is happening on Wednesday, 7 p.m. The people in the cast are uh, James, Emmy, RJ, Carrie, and um, and our, uh, our, our mod, Lachlan, um, or uh, Ben. Um, yeah, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, so please come on by, take a look. Before I get going, I also want to say uh, a big thank you, not only to our audience, you guys are all amazing, but also a special thank you to our patrons. Uh, you guys are incredible, and uh, the you going above and beyond to help support us is, again, we're, we're able to move into this new studio space because of you guys. Um, well, because of all of you, really. I, I yeah. So really, thanks to everyone. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Once again, I'm Scott. And, oh yeah, um, see, I'm already doing my, my wrap-up. Uh, if you want to follow us, we're on social media. All of the links are in the widgets below. But also, we have a Discord that is open to the public, uh, where you can, if you have painting technique questions that you want to ask, or if you want to, uh, just hang out with other members of our community, you can go there. Again, the link is below. Now, normally, we have a post-show hangout where we just hang out for a little bit and chat in, in a more setting where I'm not actually doing any work. Um, however, we're not going to be doing that today uh, because from here I have to clean this up pretty quick and immediately get back to packing. Uh, things are pretty busy here at the studio. Um, oh yeah, and also as Nightbot is reminding, reminding me, it is our birthday giveaway. September marks one year of us being on the internet. We are giving away uh, the inspiration tokens courtesy of Lachlan's Loot Library. Um, we had Frumpy Space Princess win one set on our Twitch show last week uh, on the Gauntlet. Uh, we have current giveaways on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Those posts are actually, there's only a couple of people entered in each one of those. So your chances of winning are actually pretty darn high if you want to go ahead and head on over to those. Um, if you're outside of the US and you want, you want to get a set of these, unfortunately the giveaway is limited only to the continental US. Um, like I said, if you're outside of the U.S. and you do want to get a set, we are also giving a set to all of our patrons at the Adventurer tier or higher uh, who are joined uh, currently or are joining this month. Anyway, that's enough about all of that. Uh, thank you all so much, and I will see you at the next Painting in Place. Bye, all. <laughs>